All right, so I'm going to call the Capital Improvement and Planning Committee meeting to order Monday, December 11th, 2023. It is 8 p.m. All voting members are present. Um, first order of business is approval of meeting minutes from November 27, 2023 and December 4, 2023. My, I only saw December 4 come through, correct? Is that correct? Um, so any comments or questions on those minutes? Um, I'm just opening again, Steve. I had um, two very quick things. Um, one is um, under number three, where we say consideration of town meeting article to request re to request to reduce CIP C membership to five. Um, I think we just need to add a little context in there, just saying due to the um, consistent vacancies on uh, CIPC um, into better enable meeting the quorum, then dot, 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 we did all, all, all of what we did. Um, that was my first um, recommendation um, the second item was under item four. Um, we don't have the ability to relinquish the seat. We have to fill it. So I think we can just strike that whole second sentence, um, because it's, it's in the town code. Um, so we don't have an ability to kind of change that. Um, I think where I caused confusion sitting, going back was we have had optional ex like ad hoc or ex officio on other committees that aren't standing committees um in the past um the um final item that i'd recommend we just add a little color around is under item five that we just denote um uh, bill cundiff's presence at our meeting and that he walked through um each of those items i know we list out all the all the things we talked about and thank you for not going into detail on everyone because it, it's not necessary. Um, but I do think we need to denote that he was there and obviously is spearheading a lot of those um, requests. So those are my um, three points if uh, no one objects from the committee. I was worried that you were going to say that we needed to go into the details. So uh, I'll, I can gladly make uh, those other revisions. Yeah, I think if we had deliberated and started taking motions on some of them, that might have been a different story, but we were really listening, and there's obviously a ton of attachments, as you denoted as well. So, any other comments for Steve? All right. Seeing none, I will move that we um, accept those meeting minutes with the edits discussed in this meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All right. Roll call, Tony. Aye. Jeff? Uh, abstain. <clears throat> Joe? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I am I as well. So there's a 401 vote. All right. Um, going back to a little bit of old business is appointment of CIPC member to the pilot committee. So I know Joe, we talked about last time, Joe has resigned that seat. Um, Steve, and Tony, we're going to do some homework on it. Jeff, I know you mentioned that you watched the meeting. Um, so I will leave it to you three to discuss um, where each of you are at with the hope that we can maybe get to a motion in an appointment. Uh, I did, you know, I did some homework. I looked at it. Um, I would be willing to uh, do that. And if anyone else, you know, has stronger beliefs in becoming part of that committee, um, you know, I will, you, you could join, um, but uh, if there is another uh, volunteers, then I will take the, that um, I will volunteer myself for that. So I was going to say the same thing. So I would be willing to do it if, uh, you know, no one else stood up, stepped up for it. So, so I'm neutral about this. Okay. And Jeff? I'll make it easy on you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I don't think I have the time to give it what it, what it needs. So um, I will let the two of you duke it out. 
We appreciate you guys. And, and Joe was obviously out, and I took myself out last meeting. So, um, and either one of you have really strong feelings about getting involved on it. I think it's great that we have two people willing to step up. I was afraid um, that we may not have that situation. So, any strong preference amongst you guys? So we got to make a motion, but is there? Um, I don't know if it could be like a share, kind of like a shared responsibility or. Uh, you know, if you could have, uh, I could do it for six months and then maybe Tony for six months, or is it probably not? Yeah. No, it's, especially because it's in its infancy, right? So they're laying the groundwork as Joe kind of outlined in the last meeting of, you know, doing research of what other towns do, right? So that they can come back with, I would presume, recommendations along a, a number of fronts. So um, I think it's good to know if the time commitment becomes too much for anyone that there's likely someone else that would be willing to do it. I was going to say, Steve, we could flip a coin. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. <laughs> uh, I don't have a coin here. I don't have a coin uh, handy. <laughs> oh, I will have one. Give me one second. Why are we going to audit this? Jeez. That's, you know, it's, uh, this, it'll be on the honor system here. All right. Cause I could have my wife call it. She's here too. Uh, your standard issued quarter, 1994 heads. Be, or Tony, you call it. I'm calling tails. Tails. <laughs> it was right. tail. It was tails. Then I'm going to make a motion to nominate. Actually, you accepting or deferring? Uh, I'll accept. I, that's the yeah. way that the coin flipped. So all right. Um, so to those listening, I think it's great that we have two volunteers willing to step forward. I, I that's the best part of this. Um, despite the motion I'm going to just make now. So I'll move that we appoint uh, Tony Schoner as the. CIPC representative to the pilot committee. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Thank you both. Roll call vote. Tony? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Joe? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I am I as well. Mark, does that require a formal appointment by the select board or is it because we're a standing committee that motion carries? No, it does require formal approval by the select board, so I'll put that on the agenda for next week. Okay. If you just send me a note to remind me, Jason, you know how my mind is sometimes. I, I figured. And Kathy, Kathy and Patty have both emailed separately, so they know it's coming. For, I, for the record, I, I did not hear Tony. You said I, right? So it's 5-0? Okay. Yes. I will I will denote in the minutes about a coin. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I think you should denote their, their dual interest, which is great. Yep. Um, all right. So um, next off is I know I said I, I, we'd be um, talking a little bit about where we're going with kind of some of the Warren articles, where people are at, what they need to hear more of. Um, but in the meantime, the library director um, had emailed me about um, what their plans were with the library feasibility study. And I thought it'd be great to have him come in and just um, outline to capital where where they're at. As everyone knows, this has been on the capital plan for this year for for quite some time. The efforts are somewhat linked in with the Community Center Exploration Committee, which there's a formal report, report coming very soon. Um, but uh, I invited him here. I see him here. So I'm going to bring him over. Um, I told him 810. So I'm at 809. I thought that was pretty good estimation. And um, just let him outline where we're at. If the committee's ready to take a vote um, after hearing, great. If you have more information, need more information, that this is kind of the, the time to do it. So, um, Brian is coming over. Hey, Ryan. Hi. I see Marguerite's here too. Did she want to join or is she just listening? I would assume she would like to join, but okay. I don't want to speak for her. So, Marguerite, if you'd like me to bring you over as a panelist, there you go. Raise your hand. Perfect. 
Welcome to the did party. They, did, did that hand go up before you could even ask, Jason? That... Uh, it was in the mid-sentence of you, you saying that, so. All right. Um, so, Ryan, obviously, this committee is very um, in tune of, you know, we've heard, heard from you many times. Obviously, we had some changes in membership. Obviously, your process with MBLC has changed over time. Um, I, of course, have been giving regular updates on what Community Center Exploration Committee has been doing. But I think what we would like to hear from you at this point is, is where you're at um, in terms of needing funding at this town meeting, um, realizing it would be a separate article if you are pursuing it and realizing that we would take a vote on any of it because it is a capital article. That's really what we're here to talk about tonight. And then obviously, if there are unanswered questions, we will tell you those and give you some homework to come back with and realize that this is a ongoing process. So with that, the floor is yours. Yeah, and I, I just want to apologize to you, Jason, and to the rest of the committee for not filling out the form. Um, I I was a little confused on the process of this only because the, the grant round has been revised pretty significantly. So there has been a lot of information we've kind of had to absorb on the new state process. But um, they they have a lib guide up now on the MBLC website, and I'm happy to send that link out to you. Um, the benefit is it also includes example warrant article language, which I think is going to aid us a lot. But um, it's being recommended kind of highly that we structure this as its own separate warrant article, especially given the cost that's associated with it. So just to give you guys some background, um, I was hired almost 10 years ago. The trustees, which the makeup of that committee was pretty different, but we're lucky to have Marguerite with us tonight, who's the only board member who's still on trustees, who was there when I was hired. They were talking about potentially taking advantage of the Massachusetts construction. There's a acronym, but that basically there's a construction um, grant round that's set up specifically for libraries. So this is actually the first year since I've been your director that the grant round for like the beginning of it has been open. So it hasn't, there's hasn't been that many chances. Um, Mark attended one of the early trainings with me. So he got a little taste of this as well. Um, but there was a lot of information in the in these initial trainings. One of the big things we had to do was um, reach out and get some public input as part of the process. So we actually did, you only have to do one thing for input, but the library actually did four. So we ran two in-person public forums. We had a virtual forum and then we also have an ongoing building survey. We've extended the building survey a number of times. To date, we have 332 responses. So we've gotten a pretty good cross section um, from the public. I was hoping for 500. That's what was my goal for the, the trustees. And I wish I had gotten that number, but um, the, the survey's short. And I know many of you got the link. If you haven't filled it out, you still have a couple weeks left. But essentially what we're finding is there's interest in proceeding. Um, you know, some people, some people were like, I love the library the way it is. Some people were like, I don't want to pay for the project. But those comments were pretty much in a minority. Um, we're working right now on um, getting together in a dedicated area on the library's website that's going to have some of the information, both on the timeline of the overall project. So that's gonna give people a much better idea of how the next couple of years are gonna go, um, as well as like the public input that we've already received. And we're hoping to continue that as an ongoing process. Um, what you need to know, since you guys are looking for um, this upcoming town meeting, is the, ne the next step for us, right? We went to the select board and I've talked with the library trustees. I mean, this is standing um, standing agenda item with the library trustees right now. We did go to the select board several months ago and um, we asked uh, if we could proceed with filing a letter of intent for the grant round. Um, they agreed. So we've done that. We're one of 35 libraries that did that. 
they're going to accept about 10 libraries into the program. So that gives you a little idea on our chances at this point. Um, it's competitive, so it's possible we might not get this, but at this point, we want to move forward. Um, for this upcoming town meeting, we need to um, have an article in there with specific language that, uh, that authorizes $150 that goes into the planning and design of a new library. Sorry. 150000 150,000. Thank you. Okay. Mar I saw Marguerite shaking her head no. And if it's $150, find it in your budget and be done. Yeah, there you go. Hundred. Sorry, $150,000. So it's a much bigger deal. Yeah. So I don't know. Did I leave anything out, Marguerite? Uh, the state matches... You might talk a little bit about what the state will match. Uh, partly the town meeting is supposed to vote on it in order to show that the town residents are willing to move forward with the project. So it's kind of a um, an evidence of, of town willingness to have it voted in the affirmative to move forward. And Ryan, what are the proportions that the state matches, partly for the planning and design and uh, for the building as well? Yeah, I have to double check on the planning and design, but it's it's essentially like we can authorize the 150. The state, I think, gives us, I want to say either 50 or 75,000 that we could spend potentially on top of that. So that, that's that's because there's certain criteria we have to fulfill, um, including environmental testing of like the surrounding grounds. I mean, obviously, there's a lot we want to do with some in-depth water testing that we haven't been able to previously afford. Um, so, you know, things like that, I would say. But um, what I told Marguerite, what she was kind of surprised by is at the end of this planning and design process, you eventually get, you know, some preliminary architectural drawings. So, and as part of this, we would hire um, a project manager, an operating project manager, and eventually we would have architects who we would have to go out to bid for. So this kind of starts a lengthy process. It doesn't automatically, obviously, approve ultimate construction. That will be many years from now. And then we also want the public to weigh in on the designs. So we're gonna look for opportunities for that in the future. And then um, obviously we're gonna have to go to a town meeting and make the big ask for the construction funding. So that none of this ties us into it. There are libraries that get the planning and design money and then you know, their town doesn't vote for the construction later. So we're just, we're kind of taking this one step at a time, but the next step is in asking for the planning and design money. And could I jump in just with one more thing? Um, the towns around us that have done this, Hopkinton did it, uh, Marlboro just finished a new one, uh, Grafton has a new one. Westboro did the planning and design, but they couldn't get the will at town meeting to actual, actual the expenses for the the cost of the building had skyrocketed since the planning and design. So they 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 the town residents felt it was too much money at that time. But Ryan, what are some other libraries that have been built with this recently? I think did did Natick uh, do Grafton recently completed mm -hmm. theirs. I don't and know if we mentioned beautiful. Shrews. Shrewsbury yeah. was done several years ago. I mean, it's it's kind of joked. I mean, Westboro's in this boat too, but we're one of our only area libraries that hasn't taken advantage of this construction money. Yeah. Um, so comparatively, we do look like our facility is not like other libraries in our surrounding areas. And especially, I would encourage every member of this committee, if you get the chance, to visit the new Marlboro Library. And then I don't know if you had ever been to it before, but it is dramatically different. It is much bigger. It's much nicer. And they, their overall project, I think, was $21 million. And they got over $10 million from the state in order to do that. So they they pay it paid for half. So that gives you kind of an idea. I don't think we would our project would be as big as Marlboro. We don't serve as large a community, but there are several, I think, outcomes of the project we'd like to do and we'd like to see you know, again, we'd like to price that out, see how much it costs, and then see, get some public input on what people want. 
So I, I think that's most of the information I need to convey. I'm happy to answer any questions at this point if the oh, committee has any. And oh. one other thing, if I can, if I can put in, it's it's an, a choice between building an entirely new library and building a reno, um, building an addition on the library. Not, I think Ryan said ninety percent uh, of the libraries in the state build an addition, not an entirely new library. Um, and there was one other, one other part of that. I don't think we would want something enormously huge. I think it would be. What do you think the the addition is? It would be a third again as big, Ryan. Is that is that the right? Yeah, we're we're. I mean, we had talked to DRA as part of the community center mm -hmm. um, exploration um, even before the committee was formed on sort of what we were thinking ballpark wise as a square footage increase. But what I'd like to see is about six to seven thousand square feet. The more square feet you add, the more you have to add parking which exponentially becomes a problem. There's a sort of a state formula we have to follow for square footage versus how many parking spaces. And we're above that right now because we have our own parking lot and there's over 30 spaces in it. But again, if we get too big, parking becomes a consideration we really have to think about. And there's not a lot of additional places that we could add parking. Um, I will also say, for those of you who have been following the saga of the Westboro Library, which I know many of you are, like I am, right? Some of the repair costs that they're now projecting that their town is going to have to vote on almost rival the amount that wasn't authorized for their um, new library. So even though the town voted it down, they're still going to have to pay money on their library. So, you know, I, I know a lot of, we were talking about Westboro, I think the last time was before this committee, and that's something we are kind of looking at, at as a cautionary tale. But one of the nice things I can say is that the Marlboro Library was recently constructed, and that's about 10 minutes from us, and it's a great example of what we could be, so. So let me just help lay a timeline out here, Ryan, before we answer questions from the committee. So our town meeting call at the end of March, Will there be any developments based on MBLC's timeline between now and the end of March? No, the next thing that has to be done after the money is authorized at the town meeting is that I have to actually file the grant application with the state. That happens in May. So that would be the next major, um, the next major date on the timeline. And you find out when, assuming you got the funding and the grant application goes in and you're one of the final 10. I believe we find out by the end of the summer. I think it might even potentially be earlier, depending but, on, because it, let's say they only get 10 applications that it's going to matter. It also is going to matter, I think, because even though 35 libraries did the letter of intent, I don't think all 35 communities are going to have their towns authorize the funding for the planning and design, so. Understood. Understood. All right, so if we approve the 150 at town meeting in March and you're not successful with the grant application, they say, thank you, Southboro, try again in however many years. Does that money, d does that still allow the library board to go and hire on your own and try to do this process on your own? Or would this be, would, would you frame the language such that it's contingent upon the MBLC? Or does your board still need to talk about that? Because I think that's an important question. That's something definitely I can take back to the board in at the next meeting in January. Um, I, I think I can talk to um, MBLC about that language. I, I also, we may authorize the money and then i would just say if we enter a grant two months later and then don't get into the pipeline there's nothing that states we have to immediately hire the opm or the architects right so it might be that we see we it might be like kind of a wait and see jason as long as we get accepted into the program to then proceed with all of it we could also plan and design the new library and then always 
you know, just try to enter the construction grant round the next time it comes up, they're estimating that it's going to be about a three to four year wait. And then I know that I was, I'm always like shrugging whenever you ask me about how much these uh, grant rounds are going to start up, but it has really been reorganized. And then I would just say our current governor and the current legislature is very supportive of library articles in general, but in particular of the construction funding. So I would, I, I think that the next chance for construction may come soon. The, the one thing that is fluctuating a lot, as you all know, but being on this committee, is the price, of, the cost of construction. So that is something we'd have to really, you know, I, I think we can plan and design design stuff, but we might need to reevaluate the price if we do it in several years. And then I also think, I'm hoping that the, the town, you know, putting the stuff out and getting feedback from the town means that there is interest in moving forward with this now. I think it's going to cost more later. And I think, as you all know, there's a number of um, things going on with the schools that is going to I don't think there's going to be an appetite to redo schools and the library at the same time. So, but that's conjecture. I don't know what the town is going to want to do, but I, I will say, yeah. I, I, I would view it, Capital's role, at least in my opinion, is we have an obligation to tell the community everything that's in front of us in a 10-year time period, what the possibilities are and how much that costs. We can then work with advisory and the select board to figure out how much of that we can afford. But it, our job is to kind of get it out there, which is why I'm very interested in what the library board's view is on the 150 if you don't get the grant. If you have the authorization and the wording is loose enough based on however it gets motioned at town meeting, are they going to still plow ahead and do the design? I'm not forming an opinion yet, but I think we need to throw it out there because we need to have, make sure your wording works based on what the library board wants. And maybe you need two articles, um, potentially two. Again, I think you know what you have to research and what you have to discuss, but that's I wanted to get that out there because given what we're doing together in the community center, because Ryan is a member of that committee, and then obviously what's going on with Neary, these, these pieces have to talk to each other or no one's getting support for anything because you're not you're gonna be presenting half half the pie. Um, so just my two cents. So I guess with that, I'm going to open it to questions that people have. We don't have to motion this tonight. Um, I just wanted Ryan, everyone to hear it directly from Ryan uh, of where they were at. And obviously, um, Ryan and Margaret can take anything back to the library board if there's, there's open questions to, to gather support for this article. Jason, if I can add one other uh, thing. Um, the town of Bolton uh, I don't know whether they got a planning and design, but they did not use state money to build their library, and the, it wasn't the whole library. It was it was a very fabulous addition. They did not use state money, so they didn't have those time constraints. Um, they fundraised. So that's, there's another. That's exactly why I'm asking the question. If if you're looking at an addition versus new. Yep. Um, and depending on how all the other chips fall in the community, you know. My inkling, and I'm sorry, I feel like I keep talking right before any other board member can talk, but my inclination would probably be to recommend to the trustees to probably, if we do not get the planning and design to not, I mean, we, we don't have to file the grant if we don't get the planning and design money. But I would just say if if we're not successful at getting into the grant pipeline this round, I might recommend that we turn back the planning and design money. But again, I don't know if there's going to be an appetite to do independent fundraising. I would just say the potential for us to get millions and millions of dollars as part of the construction program is the incentive to try to do this. But that's that's my opinion, and I'm not a member. We'll take it back to the board. Yeah, you give them your opinion. Take it back and bring us what your vote is. Yeah, I think probably then we'll 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 go off of that. Um, okay. So, other committee members' questions or comments on that, Tony? Yes, just one question right now. So, and perhaps you said this, Ryan. I don't recall, but is this 
an annual opportunity to get into this pipeline or is this like or or is this like every five years or this is a special year right now yeah so what wh how the, it used to work was basically they would open up grant rounds they would try to do it every i would say seven to eight years and then they wouldn't they would wait list libraries right so you would if you did everything you were supposed to do as part of the process it wasn't like they accept 10 libraries because that's what they have the funding or capacity to do they would accept everybody that had a successful grant application and then they would go on a wait list so this is actually what happened with westboro so i can talk a little bit about westboro as an example westboro successfully applied and was granted the state funding but then they were on the wait list for so long that the price just started going up and up and up. So the state is not structuring the program that way anymore. What they are doing now is they're like, you apply. If, you're if your town grants you the planning and design, you get in the grant round. The idea is that you'll kind of proceed with your new library at some point in like a five year-ish time frame right, with some variation. But what they're hoping to do now with the grant round is make it every three to four years. But that's as part of a revised version of it. Because it used to be that you would have, they had a separate grant round for planning and design, and then you had a separate grant round for construction. And now they've kind of streamlined it. So it's all the same thing. So we still have to get the authorizations the old way, but there's only gonna be one application that we submit. And we'll kind of know at, you know, this year, if we're going to be in that um, pipeline, right? If we'll be one of those 10 libraries that gets accepted. So okay. in a way, I mean. Just a, a quick follow up. Yeah. So if we don't do it this year or next year, then we might have to wait three or four more years for the next opportunity. Correct. Thank you. All right, Joe. Yeah, Ryan, uh, you gave some other examples, but two things like in the way that you envision what's going to happen if you were going to ballpark to in today's numbers just ballparking you know what would be the total amount of the project and is there a set percentage that they tend to give you for the size of a project or for the amount of a project in terms of the grant funds so no and especially with this revised grant round it used to be around 47% for libraries that got accepted. And that was of whatever their overall cost was. Um, now it's a little bit slightly restructured so that if it's a, if the smaller the library, I think the more money you're gonna get out of the grant round. And then it also depends on the amount of space that you're going to add. So basically they're, they're kind of structuring it so that it's easier for some of the Western mass libraries that haven't been able to participate in this previously um, because they don't have the amount of staff or the amount of capacity. Um, so that's a little bit easier for them. So in an odd way, it's kind of incentivized for us not to do a gigantic library, which is one of the things we're kind of getting as an initial feedback piece from the survey. Um, did that answer your question, Joe? You, and enough, enough. Okay. So, Joe, let me just expand on this. It's dangerous to go out with numbers, but the cost of public construction is well over a thousand per square foot right now. So you can do whatever rough math you want to do. Start with a thousand, go to two thousand, et cetera. That's hard and soft costs, but the hard costs alone are close to a thousand. Yeah. And yeah. I, no. So. What and what what uh, I'm going to invoke Andrea too. She's the state construction specialist from MBLC. But Andrea would tell me and scold <clears> me <throat> if I discuss specific numbers with you because we're so preliminary in the exactly. process. And, and what I can tell you is that MBLC did have data from the year 2000 to 2010. So this is in a different time. You got to remember that. But they looked at libraries that were our size and how much they paid for um, their projects. And it was between eight and $12 million, all for, for one of the libraries that I think went up to about, I'm sorry, eight, what did I say? It was eight to $12 million for the overall cost of their project 
Um, and there was one library that was more than that, that was a little bit bigger than us. But that gives you an idea of the numbers about over 10 years ago. That was like the most I got as far as a ballpark, because we were trying to wrap our heads around exactly how much something like this would cost. But also like some of these libraries have don't have to deal with a septic system. You know, some of them don't have to deal with water issues. Those are some of the yeah. challenges that we're looking that are specific to us. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you. Um, is there any risk, you know, if we're, if we're applying for MSBA and we're applying for this, are we, are we impacting our chances on, on either by having too many grants out there? Two different authorities. Okay. That's all. Thank you. My, um, and I, I did check on this because I know that there's an M, MSBA, mm -hmm. you know, potential money that we might be taking advantage of. And some communities have done both at the same time. It just, it depends on, I think the tax levy capacity. Okay. So. Well, it's not even the tax levy capacity. It's, it's um, when, when was the last time you were before each of those boards looking for money? So as Ryan noted, they haven't been to MDLC looking for money, but all our neighboring communities have. And the reason South Pro has moved relatively quickly through the MSBA program is we haven't received state funds in 25 years for schools. So that was a main factor. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions tonight? So everyone knows how to find Ryan if they have other questions. I think we'll take a vote on where people are at soon. Maybe our next meeting. Um, Ryan, I do think it would be helpful to get an indication of whether this is just looking at it in con conjunction with the grant process or whether this is we're going to go and hire an OPM and a designer and we're going to tell you how much we need, regardless of whether the state matches us or not. Um, so, any other questions related to the library? Okay. Um, I know Marguerite knows this, but Ryan, on January 6th, we go before the select board and advisory together um, with our our kind of slate of capital projects um, for this year. So this would obviously be one that we would at least have where our, our, our motion is. Obviously the select board still set the the warrant. Um, and I think, I don't know who the sponsoring party is, if this is actually a library board sponsored or not. Um, the other thing not for tonight is I do think capital will be very interested in when you would be filling, forming a building committee specific to the project. Um, if this were to be approved, given um, part of our role is actually on the back end in terms of the oversight um, as well. So again, not for tonight, but I think, you know, if there are parameters there, you know, we'll happily take a um, written submission once you have all the details there. Yeah, that I think the formation of a building committee happens relatively soon after we find out if we're in the grant. Uh, process. So I I have something I can take back to my board for January. And I, I look forward to probably coming before you guys many times as a result of this. So um, thank you for your time tonight. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your time, everybody. Good night. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so here's what I thought we'd spend kind of the next um, 20 or so minutes um, on is we've heard a lot from department heads who've asked a lot of questions, um, but I think this is the first time we're going to be in a position um, to have to make some tough decisions. I think, I think we've gotten through some of the tough decisions in, in the past couple of years, either A, through ARPA, um, B, through um, donations and or other funding sources becoming available, um, or C, um, it, it, you know, certain things fitting in. 
um, to the equation. The only two parties we haven't heard from are um, the IT directors looking for a $25,000 phone system upgrade. Um, he did submit something in writing that I can get to everyone, but would you like to hear from him or you just like to read the the memo and um, it is endorsed by the MTC, et cetera. But that, that's item one. Um, so I'll pause there and just see if there's any reaction. Let's see the memo first, in my opinion. Okay. Um, that's obviously not going to be game changing either way, um, whether we go up or down on that. And then um, the superintendent will be with us next week. And um, they have one item this year, which is um, approximately $275,000 across all of their schools for um, window air conditioning, which is, I'll call it phase one of a broader HVAC remediation um, in the schools. As, as many of you probably have heard, um, there was a pretty, um, there was a mold issue at Finn um, this school year. Um, that has been mitigated, but one of the things to um, make that mitigation as permanent as possible is adding some sort of um, air conditioning um, to these buildings. So um, the plan that he is going to discuss is gonna cross Trottier, Finn, and Woodward. Um, and I think there is a placeholder for Neary depending on how that project proceeds, but obviously that will hopefully not be um, an issue in two to three years. So that's the only thing we haven't heard about yet. We'll hear more about it next week. Um, and there's some big items coming. Um, just because we have Neary in front of us, there's roofs at Trottier. There's some other things with some of these schools that are 25, 30 years old that are going to need some attention. So we'll hear a little bit about that next week. Um, but what I wanted to do tonight is measure everyone's temperature on things that I think are a little more straightforward. In, in where we need to, where we want to focus our effort um, to try to cut things down. So kind of going back to our first meeting with department heads, we heard from the police chief on cruisers. Um, he requested two at that moment. No one voiced any objection to it. Um, we had some discussion about hybrid, not hybrid, supply chain, all of that. Is there any one here thinking that they're not supportive of that article in any way, shape or form. Okay. Um, so then we heard from facilities where we had the um, annual facilities maintenance article of 100K. John, I think Jeff, you might have questioned a little bit about whether that number was still right. Um, we talked about 100 versus 125. Um, and then we talked about 50K for South Union. So I don't know where everyone's at on those two, but figured I'd throw um, both of those back out there. So let's start with maintenance article. Assume everyone's still comfortable with 100 because we've supported that for many years. Question is, is there any appetite to go higher at this point? Well, I asked that question before I saw DPW's budget, so. I will <clears throat> happily go back to 100. John wasn't advocating to go higher, right? No, no. I I, yeah. I saw what we had for police and, and other departments and thought maybe there's a way to push things ahead given schools. But that was, like I said before, I haven't seen DPW. Okay. So I'm hearing 100, unless anyone says otherwise. That was the submission from the department head. Um, South Union, I'll kind of lead on this one. I'm not there. Um, mainly because I think the select board need to call the ball on that one. Um, if they can make a compelling case that should continue to house two departments, then I'm certainly willing to listen. Um, and I realize there's potentially committees being formed and other things kind of in discussion, but um, I, I I understand the need to maintain the building, but I think someone just needs to make a decision. We've been talking about this as a committee for three to four years. I realize it's difficult um, and that there's a lot of, you know, whether the historic aspect, the neighborhood aspect, um, but I would like to see the select board kind of 
decide what they're doing once and for all with that building. And if they can make a compelling case, then then so be it. I would certainly support the capital article to keep it um, up and operational and not in disrepair. But um, I think some level of policy can potentially um, avoid that. So I don't know others' thoughts. Go ahead, Joe. I, I think that um, I don't think we're going to get my, – my feeling is that I'm not sure we're going to get direction. Um, I think that – if anything, I would go by what John says in the sense that um, if if this is the time that we need to do the maintenance on the building, that it's time to do it. Because in irregardless of whatever, um, unless there's a change of ownership coming, which that will be a town meeting issue, unless that's there, we're still in that building. And we will be for a while and for, I think for a couple of years. So if he says it's time to do some maintenance, I think that's where I sit, that it's time to do the maintenance. We've been deferring for quite a while. And if we can get away with 50,000 or less for a couple of years of usage, um, then I think that's probably pretty good. Unless the select board is going to set another agenda and say it's leaving or, or a town meeting says that, then I think, I think we're in it. Others? I agree with Joe on the fact that it's going to take a couple of years. I can't recall what was said about whether this could be pushed off a year or two. I, I, I don't recall a conversation on that. We kicked the can down the road for both. I mean, kick the can down the road for the cost, knowing that a decision that it's made by the select board soon, that gives us a one or two year window. So, Mark, is there any placeholder articles on the warrant for South Union yet? No, nothing yet. Or is there discussion of anything or too early? I think it's probably still a little bit too early, um, but I would expect that probably to come in the next couple of meetings. So, I would think the way to try to tie this together would be is if only they can bring forward that to town meeting, right? In terms of whether it's a disposition, disposition article, a repurpose article, whatever, if something like that were to reappear that we condition any sort of vote on self union, like based on that, like almost stage the, the warrant potentially mark, right? If they're going to put something on self union that we wouldn't vote on capital on self union until we know what's happened to self union. If they obviously do nothing with self union, then I think we have a general path forward, but we're not going to know that until later. Go ahead, Joe. I'm wondering if this is one of those situations where, um, you know, we, we simply put it in because if the status doesn't change, then we should be doing it. And then, you know, if the status is going to change, then we pull it out at the, at the meeting. It's almost like we have an asterisk next to it in our presentation, essentially. Yeah, I mean, because, it, it, you know, we, we know how this goes where it's like if you don't put it in and have the options available at town meeting, they, you know, this, it just festers. And uh, whether it's the library or any other sort of thing, uh, I'd rather be proactive in putting it in and then active in pulling it out if we need to, as opposed to not having it there and then having it fester for another six to 12 months while nothing may happen in the six to 12 months. I mean, this, especially with South Union, I think there's sort of been a resistance to doing a really full on uh, gut check by the town on this building and the departments in it for a while. And I, I, I see this possibly, if, if there isn't something really firm that the town decides, it could just drag on for another two, three, four, five years. Everyone good with that approach? Okay. Um, let's go to fire. Um, so in case folks haven't heard, Chief Achilles did um, make a public announcement, I believe today, um, regarding his departure from the town no later than early February. Um, I've already spoken to Mark about this. It, um, it, it, that was a huge loss for the town. Um, 
in you know anytime you have public safety assets going up to town meeting um it, it requires the chief to stand behind them um who know i, I don't know who's going to be in the spot then I, obviously mark hasn't had a, a time to discuss that with his board um but there's a significant amount of capital um and um I'm, I'm very concerned candidly um that no matter what level of support capital throws behind some of these things um it's going to require some strong leadership from either that department head um like they're not a permanent department head at that point in time um you know through through town meeting and um the easiest thing and we saw this with karen's departure last year is to just punt something down the road that is not the right answer for the town in a lot of these things and i think we as capital need to stay very close to these things and try to figure out as much of a plan um, as we've heard every month that passes things get more expensive and i don't think just because we're going through a department head transition which unfortunately happens a lot um should should um move a department up or down um last year we had no choice with kind of the dpw situation um here we have the luxury of chief achilles will be around for a couple more months hopefully um but um I think we need to um, talk about each of these in, in with respects to like where we stood when chief, the chief was in front of us and um, where we want to go with them and obviously work with him as best we can um, during this time and at least getting it sounds like he'll be here Mark for the January meeting um, at least getting him to select board and advisory and then then going from there and obviously you have a little more of a, um, a path forward so um, I'm just going to go down the list and kind of see where people were at on some of these things and just make sure I know at least where capital was at. Um, the first was the ambulance. That was 551000 with a primary funding source would be the ambulance fund. Um, were there any concerns with that one? Um, I'm just going to go on record saying I have some concerns with the cost um, because I think the cost can be mitigated by proactive authorization, and then purchasing. I also have concerns in terms of the implementation risk of that. Um, if you remember, the chief basically had, I think, a 30 or 40% gross up on the cost based on what the, the vendor had told him. So we can nip away at that 30 to 40% if we take if we get this thing, like I'll call it developed now, so that someone just has to press an order button um, once town meeting comes. But I realize that's easier said than done. So I'm this is candidly a no-brainer. I just think we need to try to find a way to make sure the implementation of it doesn't go awry. Um, defibrillators, paramedic, we've heard this one many times. I didn't hear any dissent on that one before, just making sure no nothing's new on that. That's 100,000. Um, good news is self-contained breathing apparatus um, is going to be an FY24 item, so that's going to be for advisory to figure out um, and or the department budget. Um, for that 30,000. So that will come out of consideration for town meeting. Um, and then the power stretcher 65.5 for the new ambulance. So this is in addition to the cost of the actual ambulance. Um, we already bought one last year, um, which was in the 50,000 ish range. So you can just see what one year has done to that. Um, that is unfortunately a very good number because I got the same quote um, very recently um, for the same exact thing. So, um, any questions or comments on that? Um, and then we had the ladder, um, which is a ladder slash tower. I think um, what a lot of us spent time talking about with the chief when he was here. Um, we kind of had three options that were in front of us at that time. I don't know if anyone's had some time to think about it um, anymore, which path they wanted to go down. I will tell you, Brian and I traded notes and um, based on how he would bond it, and especially if it didn't hit for a couple of years in terms of um, the, the permanent bonding, um, if we did go the demo truck route, um, we would likely be able to fund it through the ambulance fund. Um, and that's absent any additional donations or anything that would be used to offset it. So um, I took that as the hallmark there, but we do need to provide some direction so that the chief can continue his diligence with his department. If this is, if we're going down that path versus the repair um, sort of overhaul path that he originally came in with. So pause there and see what people think.
Go ahead, Joe. Uh, I think for me, it was a matter of, you know, uh, of overall cost. I mean, everything, everything to me in this, in this sort of capital area of this size is a cost averaging for the most part. So, I mean, like if we're looking at 200 grand and maybe we're getting, you know, four or five years out of it, um, I realize there's a performance problem that she brought up, which is troubling. Um, and, but you know, we're, we're going to have a little less capability, a little more capability with a smaller truck. And I get the, you know, we can't, it's not trading an apple for an apple. We're trading sort of a, a, a half rotten orange for an apple. Um, but still, uh, you know, my finance, my finance hat always tells me to, to cost average. So if we can bring it in and push off the cost a couple of, maybe a couple of years, maybe two years, like you're saying, and we don't have to pay the 200,000 that into the, and sort of adds into the finance bucket for a new truck. Um, as well as the fact that if, if we can bring that price in at, you know, reasonable costs, sort of definitely 1.2 million at the highest, but hopefully, you know, if we can find something on a bargain rate, that would be fabulous. And that would make a decision a lot easier. That's sort of where I sit. And when you do the cost, are you taking call it 1.3 for the new and averaging that over 20 years, which I think was the lifespan he gave? Yeah, well, well, you, that as well as though if you're looking at a cost, possible cost increase on buying a truck in, you know, four to five years, you have to factor that back into the into the thought of of um, overall cost dynamic. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. I was going to agree with Joe on the on the performance issues. I. I think the chief was pretty candid that there's some some shortcomings in our current model or our current truck. You know, it has the uh, the taller ladder, but can't get it on certain certain streets, and that there's some risk there. Um, I just felt like it was potentially an upgrade for the town, and I'm I'm in favor of that approach. Good, Tony. Yeah, I continue to be, I guess, against <clears throat> trying to repair the current machine. Um, and I'm with Tony. I'm vehemently opposed to repairing um, the current machine to get another five years. Um, all right. Um, Steve, I know you weren't at that meeting. I don't know if you had a chance to watch the replay. Do you have any um, strong thoughts on this? Uh, I I watched a little bit of the the previous meeting, but uh, no, I I agree with you guys not to um, spend money repairing it when you know that's not that doesn't appear to be the best option for it for the town. Okay. Um, is there anyone in favor of exploring the repair at this point? I didn't hear it. All right, so I think we'll take the feedback back to the chief and see what he thinks is possible to to navigate given kind of the change there. And um, I'm not sure, Mark, if, if he even has a, a member um, or an officer of the current organization that may be able to kind of spearhead some of that um, in, you know, regardless of what happens with the permanent the permanent position. I think that would also be a, a potential path forward in terms of a teaming approach. Yeah, I think those are the discussions we're having now, Jason. Okay. Um, okay. So can we do five more minutes and talk just quickly on DPW? That work for everyone? So um, I don't think it was um, a shock to anyone at, at the, the, the new DPW superintendent had a huge list. Um, obviously a fresh look at things. Some of those things candidly were on there. Some of those things have ballooned in cost or had bad cost estimates in the past. And some of them are just, um, fresh thinking. Um, to me, um, I, I never struggled so much, at least in my time on capital with how to move something forward. Um, because I didn't hear a lot of, Oh, this would be nice for for my crew to have that you know to do this like these were multifunctional assets that are core to the operations of whether it be water, whether it be highway, whether it be plowing. Um, but I don't think I'm saying anything out of turn in terms of um, there's no way we can fund all of that, even if all the other departments had no capital, unless there's some magic bucket of cash that 
capital is not aware of Mark. And, and even if you bond some of this stuff, um, there's just a lot. And I think the roadway stuff is the, the scariest part, even leaving Quarterville off to the side, like some of these culverts that are creeping in at two, three hundred thousand dollars for for streets that have mixed use, right? They're not, you know, the, the most used streets in town, but at the same time, they need to be passable for the residents that live on them. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm just looking for ideas for how um, we pare this down um, to um, and, and what we need from the DPW superintendent to to, to pare it down. And I kind of leave the road maintenance and I leave Quarterville off to the side, and I'm really talking about all of the equipment plus the culverts. Like it's just it's just a lot. Um, and I don't know that I could sit here and say this tractor is more valuable or important than this trailer and this attachment that goes to the, the tractor. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and see what thoughts folks have. Go ahead, Steve. I think that was kind of one of the good things that he did with that presentation was kind of um itemized the 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 more important uh in in of those each individual color selections of what the kind of immediate need versus can this wait a little bit yeah it would be good to have it now um but having their own um priority list for you know our discussion i think helped for sure Jeff. I have two thoughts. First, well, two, two, one thought and one question. Is he planning on coming back to us on some of the key takeaways that we had? I um, think he's willing to, okay. but I think we need to probably pare down. I know there were some questions in the moment, but I think we need to really pare down okay. our, our focus. Um, and it would probably be, have to be a special meeting which I realize this is not the, any any a good time of the year for anyone um, at the moment. So uh, we just need to think about how we accomplish that. But okay. whatever we need to get comfortable to be able to stand up and support him is, I think, important. And if we don't support something, being able to articulate why, because then we're going to have to deal with it's going to still be on the capital plan next year. It will cost X factor more. And is it still a need? Most of the time when we've made tough decisions in the past, things have just disappeared, i.e. we just decided not to pursue them um, anymore, as opposed to, um, you know, it wasn't just because of a cost thing fitting it into a year. My other couple of questions. It'd be good to get some type of cost benefit analysis, I think, on some of the stuff that he wanted to bring in house versus what we outsource to make a decision on that, like the hot box and the, and the roller, for example, there's a couple hundred thousand dollars. I don't know what we typically spend every year. And if there's a way to think about continuing outsourcing that versus making some type of capital outlay, uh, that'd be a question I have. Um, and then two, from an overall perspective, I don't know if this is a time for us to look at our capital prioritization schedule that we put together and mm -hmm. maybe rate these somehow in 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 light of how we have established our prioritization i know that he uh that the, the uh, superintendent has come up with his own prioritization but i think we need to look at it based on the, kind of what our bylaws are okay joe yeah, I, I'm. I like a lot of what Jeff Jeff said. He he definitely took some of the steam out of my sail on that. But um, I would also say I think we really need to look at what the cost of failure is on some of these things, um, and the outsourcing on that. Um, as he was saying, as Jeff was saying, um, you know, you know, for these big trailers that are one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, nobody wants to pay more in the future, but um you know we're just throwing trash in them what's the what are they really likely to fail or are they are they just in need of replacement at some point um i think there's some other equipment that you know we probably could justify pretty easily based upon the time and age and usage 
as opposed to some things that just we use once or twice a week that, you know, if they get beaten on and are a little bit substandard, that's fine as long as they're not going to fail. Um, I think those are the, so those are some of the things that we need to weed out in this um, as, as well as that, as well as Jeff said in the outsourcing of certain things versus, but I mean, some of the things like we, that we asked for that we haven't gotten that we probably should have are things like with the hot box where we're really looking at are the cost effective solutions and could we do it at a cheaper rate and not buy new equipment at the start to see if that works out for us? Because we don't know with some of those things he was talking about whether really we're talking about adding more people to make those really effective ventures for the town. Do we have the expertise in town to do some of those really well? Um, and, and I, they seem more like a, they seem more like a town business venture than just an, just an investment in equipment. And I don't mind investing in that equipment if we're going to save money over the next X number of years doing, doing projects with that equipment. But I really want to know that up front. And I don't think that we quite have the answers on that or a, or a sort of a business plan type of um, presentation on those yet that that assures me that we're really doing the right thing by investing in them and especially buying them new as those are more long-term commitments versus trying to find some fairly cheap used equipment to try out and see if see if we like doing it and if we do it well. Okay. Tony, did I see your hand up? Yeah, I don't know. I, I sometimes I struggle with how we're supposed to do this. <laughs> right. Um I mean, like, is there actually just an amount of money that the town town can afford, right? Now I know it's not a it's not a business; it's a town, and so maybe there's a lot of gray here. But you know, I, part of me wants to go back to the DPW and say, look, you're you, you know, you just can't spend that much this year. You know, you can only spend a half of that or whatever the guidance is, based on some financial thing that the town is managing, and then say, so what would you do if you can only spend half? Um, I don't think we can, we can't prioritize all these things. I, I, it seems like the departments have to prioritize based on guidance that we give them on how much they can spend this year. But, but maybe I don't understand how this works. No, I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. Um, maybe I'm going to propose two steps forward based on, because I think Joe had, Joe and Jeff had some points there too, that I want to pull out. Um, Mark, perhaps. Brian around this week? He is, yes. So I'm wondering if Brian 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 has an idea of the budgets at this point, right? There, there's uh, in terms of operational. I realize there's a lot of wants and in in desires for levels, but he has a, a general idea of where things are trending, correct? I think I think that's fair. Yeah. So I, I would think step one would be um, sitting down with Brian and having him come to the front end of our meeting next week, as long as that works for him and just kind of showing, right? Like this is where capital was last year. This was how much we did appropriations. This is how much we did for bonding. If you went to a million dollars this year or 1.5 or two, this is what happens just for capital, right? Leaving all operations off to the side. And at the same time, giving, having Brian work with Bill in the background and say, Okay, Bill, we have about 750 left or 500 left that can be appropriated this year. I refuse to bond these things. These have to be appropriated within the current budget. How would, where would you go with this, right? And he's going to go back to this Steve mentioned to write his prioritization list. He may then do some of the analysis that Joe's requesting, and it may ferret out some of these things. Again, absent the major road project, I think that's just a separate item in it together. So then what I would suggest, and I know this doesn't work for you, Jeff, would be we start at seven next week, not eight, and have Jeff, you join, like maybe we have the superintendent come first, deal with the school piece, which I think is pretty isolated, then have Brian do his thing, then have Bill kind of on call. So we kind of know where we're landing approximately absent one or two items by the end of, by nine o'clock, right? So does any of that make sense or sound like a plan? Just because I don't know we're gonna, if we just do an hour next week, we're just going to have schools and it's just we're not going to advance it. I think some of these things may course correct themselves if, if there's some homework done in between the meeting, we, especially between Brian and Bill, not to volunteer them for this week. But I know they're usually up for the task. That makes sense to you, Mark? Yeah, I think so. OK. So I think we try that. If no one objects, 
and then see where we're at at the end of next week um, meeting. And then I think we'll take some formal motions on at least what we've discussed tonight next meeting, just to get those solidified um, with funding sources. So the Brian can kind of start to budget it out. And then if we still have dissent or items we need to reconcile, we can, you know, asterisk a few things. Um, we have done that in the past, but we need to just kind of narrow down a little bit where, where we're asterisking. That sounds fine to me, Jason. I might also recommend maybe for the agenda next week, putting time periods on the different discussions. So we try to bound ourselves a little bit um, so that we can finish at a reasonable yes. time. Yeah, we had a late start tonight, unfortunately. So no, I understand that, but still, we could try to bound each conversation. Yes. Um, the only danger of doing times is um, people get mad when you um, start something early. Um, so let's say I put something for 7.30 and we were done with the superintendent at 7.15. But I will I will prepare the stakeholders with what the expectation is for their, their time commitment. How about that? Fair enough. Um, okay. Um, all right. Anything else on FY25 Capital before I just do public comment and we adjourn? Okay. Is there any public comment? I'm seeing none. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Everyone seconded it. Um, roll call vote. Tony? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Joe? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I am I as well. So I will reschedule us for seven next week and get you some stuff in between. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks. See ya. See ya.